I'm standing beside this 1983 240D Mercedes. And for those of you who are not familiar with this car, this is a real milestone car. It was a milestone for Mercedes-Benz because it was the last year they produced this car, 1983. And I remember hearing stories of riots in Europe because people didn't want this car to cease production. And you still see this car driving all over the world. Many third world countries still use this for taxi cabs. So it is a pretty famous car if you're not aware of that. But it's also a milestone for me because 22 years ago, this car, not this one here, but one very similar to it was the very first Mercedes I purchased. And I want to tell you a little story because I had only owned the car for about a week. And I remember thinking, you know, I should do an oil change. I've heard that it's really important to do oil changes on these diesels. So, you know, I ordered up the filter and I read about, I got the manual out and I read about how to do this. Remember, this was before the days of going online and checking with some forum on how to do things. You actually had to read the manual. <laughs> and so I, I went to work, you know, I got in there, I pulled the filter out and changed the filter. I thought, man, this is cool. Look, I don't have to get under the car to change the filter. And I was impressed with that right off the bat. But I got everything back together, put the oil in it, and I took off down the road, and the transmission wasn't shifting right. I'm going, no, what, what happened? You know, I'm, the transmission's sh like shifting way too soon. And, it's, and I thought, oh, no, you know, I just bought this car. You know, I didn't pay a fortune for it, but I paid some good money for it. And I'm thinking, I can't believe it. I've only owned it a week and the transmission has gone bad. So I thought, well, maybe I should call the previous owner up and see if he's got any advice. And I called him up and I asked him, uh, hey, do you know why the transmission in that car might be going bad? And he said, he asked me, I remember he asked me on the phone, he says, hey, Kent, what was the last thing you did to the car? Uh, and I said, well, I just changed the oil. And he started laughing. He literally started laughing over the phone because he says, you know, could you go check those vacuum lines that are right beside that oil filler housing and check if you knocked any loose? And sure enough, you know, I went back in there and there was this vacuum line I had knocked off and I plugged it back in and went and drove it again and the transmission just shifted fine. And that's when I first learned how critical the vacuum is with these transmissions on these older Mercedes diesels. And I think over the years, you know, I've worked on many, many of these transmissions. You can't believe how many transmissions have probably been replaced in these cars that never needed replacing. Now, with the advent of the Internet and the ability for people to go online and find out information, I think more diesel owners today know about the perils of jumping to conclusion about a bad transmission because it might only be a vacuum related issue. So let's fast forward to today. And this friend of mine called me up and said, hey, I've got this 240D, my wife's complaining about it. She says she has to push her foot to the floor and her foot gets tired driving it because no matter where she goes, she can't get over 40 miles an hour. And I asked him, I said, well, have you changed the filters? He said, yeah, the filters are good, you know. And he's checked some other things. He said, yeah, and the transmission's kind of shifting funny. I thought, aha, <laughs> flashback. 22 years ago, I said, hey, why don't you bring the car out? Let me look at it. Maybe it doesn't need a transmission. Because he said, well, I took it in this transmission shop and they're already telling me I'm gonna need to have the transmission overhauled because it's not shifting properly. And they were explaining to him, that's probably the reason why it wasn't producing any power. So uh, I'm thinking, oh boy, here we go again. I've heard this story over and over and over again. You know, if you own one of these older Mercedes diesels, do not let someone tell you you need a new transmission until you thoroughly inspect and test the entire vacuum system in the car. And that's not something that I'm going to do a video on because it's a very lengthy uh, subject. In fact, the longest manual I've written over the years is on the subject of diesel automatic transmissions. About, I think it's about 130 pages long. I mean, literally, that's how much information I had to cover to talk about everything related to getting one of these diesel automatic transmissions to shift at peak performance. You have to start with the basics. You have to start making sure your whole vacuum system is healthy. Then you have to make sure you don't have any leaks anywhere because if you have vacuum leaks going off in some, some other component in the car, it, then your transmission is not getting the proper vacuum. And particularly on these 240Ds, 
it has two things going against it. Number one, it's only a 2.4 liter diesel, so you need everything at peak performance, not only the transmission, but the engine for this thing to get up and move with modern day traffic. The other thing is on these 240Ds in the 1980 to 83 era, they did not have a pressure control rod, which controlled the ship points. Everything on this transmission is controlled by vacuum, both how smooth it shifts and when it shifts. So if you have vacuum issues, the transmission can literally go crazy on you. And that's probably why a lot of people have had their transmissions replaced when they never needed replacing. So I'm going to open up the hood here and kind of show you some of the first things you should check. And then we're going to take this out on the road before I do anything, because I want to kind of show you what's happening with this. And then <laughs> I've got some ideas on some quick tests and some adjustments I can make. And then we'll take it back out on the road and see if we get any improvement at all. By the end of production of the W123 240D, Mercedes was putting an awful lot of vacuum lines and vacuum hoses on these engines, partly to reduce emissions, and all this can affect how the transmission shifts. Look at all these lines going up here to this block, and then to, into these two white valves here, and then it's going over to the EGR. So if any of these lines are plugged in improperly or you've got leaks in any of the fittings here, or maybe these valves are bad, and it's all bleeding vacuum off, then the right vacuum isn't getting to the line going to the transmission. Now you look closely here, this is the black line that's going all the way down back to the transmission. So you gotta make sure that the vacuum line of the transmission is plugged in properly. You need to make sure the vacuum modulator is not leaking. Then you need to make sure that there's no disconnects on any of these hoses and fittings here, but Finally, you have to make sure this is routed properly. With the advent of more vacuum hoses and lines on these engines, Mercedes started putting these stickers on the front core support. This is a vacuum diagram, which shows where all these hoses are supposed to go, along with some codes for color. So one of the first things you want to do is check this diagram. If you don't have this diagram, you may have to find one. Sometimes these get torn off or they get worn off. In this case, this diagram is in a very good condition, but I am going to need a magnifying glass because, uh, you know, I'm getting old. So I, I got to get down in here and see, okay, what about this line that goes up to here and that goes to that block? This goes over to the EGR that goes over there. So you want to spend some time when you're troubleshooting any kind of transmission shifting problem, make sure that you're getting good vacuum here from the vacuum pump. Now I have a manual called Vacuum Source Troubleshooting and Repair, and that's going to help you troubleshoot your vacuum pump, whether or not you got any major leaks in the system. That's the first thing you need to do. And then you want to check routing, and I've done that, and the routing on this particular engine looks okay. So before I do anything else, let's take this thing out on the road. <laughs> I'm going to show you what it does. If you haven't ridden in a 240D, this will give a new meaning to slow. <laughs> but this is a bad tuned 240D. Now what I'm doing here is I'm waiting at this main road. I've got to make sure there's no cars at least a quarter mile away or I'm going to have some really mad drivers at me pulling out in front of them in this car that just will not accelerate. So we'll just sit here and wait. Here comes some more cars. Now if I turn to the right it's going to be going uphill. I don't want to go uphill. Okay now I'm going to floor it right now. It's floored. Okay, it just shifted in the second, shifted in the third. Look at that. It's floored. Oh, it shifted in the fourth at 40 miles an hour. I still have it floored. It's approaching 45, 50 miles an hour. How's that? Zero to 50 in 36 seconds. Just kidding. But look at that. It's still floored. <laughs> oh, man. That brakes good. <laughs> Okay, after I turn here, we're gonna turn the camera off and then uh, we'll get on a flat here and we'll go through it again, shifting the transmission manually. Okay. All right, let's try it again. I pulled the shift lever down into low and I'm gonna go through it manually. Let's see if we get any improvement in acceleration. Okay, right now I'm gonna floor it. And I'm gonna shift the S. Oh, it immediately shifted into third. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I'm at 35 miles an hour. 
38 miles an hour, 40, it's still floored. Now we'll shift into drive, it immediately drops into drive. So even shifting it manually is, oh man. Now I understand why my friend's wife had such a sore foot. She was literally pressing against the floor, hoping, just hoping, the car would go faster. This heavy traffic road here, I've got it floored. Oh man, 25, oh it just shifted to the third at 28. Um, it's still floored. Oh, it shifted into fourth gear at 36 miles an hour. It's still floored. And we're approaching 45. We're getting up to 50. Can you believe it? We're almost at 50 miles an hour. Now I've got to turn into the shop. Let's take this back there. I'm going to do a few adjustments, see if we can get this to perform any better with just messing with the vacuum. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to work. I've got my vacuum hand pump tester, which is something you'll need to thoroughly test the system. Then I have my VCV vacuum test unit here. This is the vacuum control valve right here that controls the amount of vacuum going back to the transmission. So this could be a problem. We could have some leaks. We could have a problem at the modulator. Uh, we're gonna to have to take both this and this and go through a bunch of testing sequences which I cover in my manual in detail. We also have these particular tools available. So if you're gonna get into adjusting and tuning your own transmission, I highly recommend you have this VCV test gauge and the vacuum hand pump gauge. Okay, we're ready to head back out on the road. It only took me about 15 minutes to find a problem with the amount of vacuum going to the transmission modular. So I made some modifications to the hose routing, checked the operation of the VCV with my VCV gauge, and we've got good vacuum now going to the modulator. The proper amount of vacuum, not just vacuum. So let's try it now. Okay, I'm gonna floor it. Oh, there she goes. Revs up. Okay, there, we're in second. Okay, she shifted to third at 35 miles an hour. Right on up to 50, 52, and it's shifted into fourth. Look at that. Now, granted, this isn't a turbo diesel, but that's pretty good for a 240D. <laughs> what a difference. Okay, I'm cruising along here at about 30 miles an hour in fourth gear. Let's see how the kickdown works. I'm going to go ahead and floor it right now. 32 miles an hour, floor it. Okay, she shifted into third. Okay, we got 40, 45, 50, 53, shifted into fourth. <laughs> what a difference. Okay, now I'm cruising along here about five miles an hour and I'm just going to slowly accelerate as if I were in town traffic and see how it does okay it's not floored it's about three quarter of the way down that's pretty good acceleration shifted into third you notice it jumped right into fourth that's one of the problems with these vacuum operated transmissions if you play with a throttle and it's not fully to the floor you sometimes get that rapid jump between third and fourth now this time I'm going to start out fairly slow and then just gradually floor it, but keep it to the floor, okay? All right. There she shifted into third. Now, it didn't jump to fourth that time because I've got the throttle to the floor. Now I can ease off on the throttle and notice it shifted into fourth gear at 45. So when you're driving one of these 240Ds with all vacuum controls on the transmission, no pressure control rod or no Bowden cable, you can manipulate the shift points by where you position the throttle. Watch again. This time I'll go ahead and go out on the road and manipulate the shift points. Okay, we're into third. Keep it floored. Now I'll back it off and I'll immediately floor it again and it'll downshift. So you can see how you can play with the shift points with your throttle. Then, of course, I released the throttle there and immediately shifted into fourth gear at 48 miles an hour. So now we're just cruising. Nice cruising in a 240D.
Well, how's that for an easy repair? Instead of costing two or three thousand dollars for a new transmission, it only took 15 minutes of doing some vacuum modifications, testing, and adjusting. I think you'll have to admit it's pretty amazing that with just 15 minutes of doing some tests with some vacuum gauges, vacuum hand pump tester, and the knowledge to know what to test and then what to adjust or what to change as far as vacuum routing, that this, tr this transmission is shifting beautifully. Now, how much money do you think he just saved? I figure he probably just saved getting rid of the car because the replacement transmission is going to be $3,000. So I'm sure the owner is going to say, no, I don't want to do that. Now, I'm not saying that every transmission problem that you might run into with these old diesels is going to be able to be fixed with some vacuum adjustment. I get these emails all the time. They'll say, oh, the transmission's slipping real bad, you know, at speed. Sometimes the transmission wears out and no amount of vacuum adjusting, you know, if it won't go into gear, it's probably not a vacuum issue. If your transmission smells real burnt when you pull the dipstick out and give it a good whiff, you know, it's time to start looking for a replacement transmission. But if it slips, now there's a difference, you know, my book talks about flaring. And a flare is when it goes and then just slips momentarily and then shifts. Sometimes that's a vacuum issue. But if your transmission goes you know, and slips for three or four seconds, probably no amount of vacuum adjusting is going to help that problem. So I just want to warn you, if you set out to, to troubleshoot and repair one of these yourself, you're not going to lose anything. At least you're going to get a second opinion. You're going to be the person that's going to give this transmission a second opinion. Once again, the manual I wrote a number of years ago is the most complete and the most detailed manual I've written. To shoot a series of videos on the same subjects that I cover in that manual would probably take about three hours of video time and cost me a fortune to film that video. So I'm not going to be doing any detailed videos on tuning these diesel automatics because I've already written this lengthy manual. If you flip through it, it's loaded full of pictures, all kinds of descriptions. It takes you chapter by chapter through the steps you need to take, beginning with the simple things and moving up to the more complex things like adjusting the VCV valve to really fine tune when the transmission shifts and how smoothly it shifts. Now in this case, I don't think I need to make any further adjustments to it. It's good to go. Can you imagine how happy the owner's wife's going to be? She's going to say, oh, my foot doesn't hurt anymore. I don't have to push so hard on the floor. All I can say is if you have one of these older diesels and you're having any kind of transmission issues, check out my manual. It could save you thousands of dollars.